Prospects flying under the radar? Oh, yeah, we got a few right here on Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. Welcome in, everybody. It's Locked On NFL Draft, former NFL AFL defensive back. Eric Crocker is ready to roll. You see him with that beautiful hat on. Looks good in that room. Where's your, where's your USC jersey? Somewhere over there, right? <laughs> Got to be somewhere over there. My man Ryan Tracy with the hat backwards, at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter from Rogue Analytics, NFL33.com. I'm John Harris, football analyst, sideline reporter for the Houston Texans, also owner-operator of footballtakeover.com. We appreciate your business over there if you want to check my website out. Tonight's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, helping you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Now, when you're in podcast world, radio world, what's the one thing they always say? Play the hits. Play the hits. So we've talked a lot about quarterbacks. We've played a lot of hits. But the fun songs that you always told your friends about were on the B side, right? Led Zeppelin always had a B side. Man, what was on the B side? Well, that's what we're doing tonight. We're doing under the radar prospects in this 2023 NFL draft class. My man, Ryan Tracy, is going to lead us off with an under the radar prospect that I know I absolutely love. Ryan, your prospect is? It is Boise State safety J.L. Skinner, a guy that's been on my list since I watched Boise last year, but he's steadily climbing up and getting more of a name for him. It, it culminated in the divisional game here against Wyoming. A, a lot of folks might have seen that. Might have been their first chance to see Boise this season. But a guy that I thought I had kind of pegged from his film last year is, as having a role. But he's come back and he's made plays, two, two big interceptions in this last game, that showed that he can play more in space than I originally thought. He's, he's widened what I think – his ability can be, and it, it coincides with a safety class that we saw this year as rookies in the NFL that have widened what they're capable of, blurring the lines between box safety and free safety, and are you really a nickel corner, and how do you align, what can you do for everybody? J.L. Skeeter can do it all, and I like him in the box. Everybody loves him in the box because he plays there all the time, but he can line up at nickel, and in space, in free, he can now prove to everyone on film that he can make the big plays. He's a guy that might just tumble the whole top five at the safety position come draft day. You talked about some of his, uh, and he had two big interceptions against Wyoming and none bigger than the game clinching interception. You know, he's a guy who has already committed to going to the senior bowl. So, I mean, we're going to be able to get an up close and personal look with the big guy, six, four, 220 pounds. And you talked about him potentially playing around the line of scrimmage, kind of in that box, that type of safety role. Well, he definitely has the body in the frame for it. So uh, do you think there's any way he potentially kind of creeps down there and is almost utilized as more of an outside linebacker? That's what I originally thought. I'm pretty sure John would agree with that too. But it was more for me because it was a, a lack of playmaking in space deep than it was that I thought he could do it. You know what I mean? Now I see him as it's really more of a utilitarian. You can line him up anywhere. You can overhang him if you want. And I still feel he can go back and play single high and do a decent job. You know, it's funny because the very first time I saw him, the, the comp that came to mind, and I don't know how many people remember this, Dale Buchanan. And Dale Buchanan played at Washington State. And now this was back in the renegade days before they started more targeting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, renegade days. I mean, he wasn't a renegade by any means. But he, Buchanan absolutely knocked the bejesus out of you. I mean, he hit anything that moved. When he got to the Cardinals, they just said, you're a linebacker. They immediately made him a linebacker. But then when I went back and I wanted to see him again, I'm like, you know what? I don't. I think he's got that club in his bag, but I think it's almost a waste to just use him down there exclusively because I do think he's got good range. So I think he can be a half field player for sure. Um, I think he could even be a middle third player for sure. He's got some range. He can absolutely move. But at 6'4", 218 pounds, I think you have a lot of versatility with where you can you can put him. In, and you guys both know. I mean, Eric, you played in the secondary uh, in the NFL. You know – that coaches are looking for those ultimate chess pieces that they can move around and leave on the field. And you never know, well, wait, is he going to be in the box? Do we have to count for him 
uh, in the protection scheme? Do we have to count for him in the run blocking? Or is that going to is he going to be in a half field? Where is that guy going to be? And when that one guy can do so many different things, it creates so many different issues for an offense and how to prepare for somebody at 6'4", 218 pounds. Now, that was Ryan Tracy's prospect. Eric and I both have prospects under the radar. And it's kind of fun because we can pick a lot of guys and tell you they're under the radar. J.R. Skinner is absolutely a stud, but he is under the radar. We'll have ours, and a little bit later we'll have some either-ors. But I want to talk to you a little bit right now about better help. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, Better Help Therapy Online. Now, if you've ever gone through therapy, you know it can be extremely effective. But how do you find the right therapist? How do you find the right person to talk to? I don't know exactly how I want to do that. Well, BetterHelp Online helps you with all of that. Life doesn't come with a user manual, but a therapist can at least move you in the right direction. Help give you tools. Well, BetterHelp allows you to find those therapists. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere 100% online. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNFL. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on nfl get unstuck with better help I'd like to thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today for your second listen today check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available on this app youtube and wherever you get your podcast all right, Eric Crocker, you are up. We're looking for an under-the-radar prospect in the 2023 NFL draft, and you say what? Rache Rice, receiver out of SMU. Uh, he's a guy who's been extremely productive. He's a guy who has kind of had to wait his turn. When you look at some of the receivers they've had at SMU last year, having Danny Gray get drafted, they also had uh, Reggie Roberson. Uh, the receiver who I think a lot of people thought were gonna, was going to go higher than Gray, but then uh, after tearing his ACL a couple years ago, kind of slowed him down as a prospect. But Rice has come on, man, and SMU hasn't lost a step with his product, uh, product production that he's put out there. He's a guy who has uh, terrific uh, hand-eye coordination, ball-catching skills, ball-tracking skills, his ability to kind of twist and contort his body in the air, still make a catch on the, uh, on the ball. Does a terrific job of that. Run after catch is legit. Not sure he has the same type of straight line speed as we saw from Denny Gray, who ran like 4-3-3. But nonetheless, a guy who definitely has that nice initial burst uh, to get out, out of there. They utilize him around the line of scrimmage with end of rounds, uh, jet sweeps, things like that. And he does those things well. So I think his game translates to the NFL right now. He's a guy I think is going to only continue to get better. But he's definitely flying under the radar a little bit as it pertains to other receivers from this class. Okay. I love that versatility of that size. He's yeah. he's really useful in a number of ways. And as the league shifts more and more to utilitarian work behind the line of scrimmage, that's what I want to see more of. I haven't had an opportunity to watch a ton of film on him, but what I have, I have like quite a bit. Do you think that he can line up a traditional slot and win against coverages that are, are tuned to try to take him away? Is, is that the question that I have? I think the initial like quickness and change of direction off the line of scrimmage can probably – be improved a little bit, especially if you want him to continuously be that guy in the slot. You know, how does slots win? Some of his whip positioning, some of his was just an understanding of, you know, soft spots, when to settle in zones, when to continue versus man. Uh, those are things I feel like he definitely has in his game. But overall, you know, uh, just continuing to improve that short area quickness if he's going to be a guy that is going to play primarily in the slot. Now, I'm going to give people a peep behind the curtain here for just this quick second. The three of us, and, and this has happened you know, in radio, podcast world, you don't want to talk about everything. You want some things to be organic and things that you know, come out of it. So we share our ideas. And so when we came up with the idea for doing Under the Radar, we're like, okay, Ryan, you come up with one. Eric, you come up with one. John, you come up with one. And then we'll share them all, right? But we didn't share who we were going to talk about. 
So who do you think my under the radar prospect was going to be? <laughs> Rasheed Rice from out of SMU. Wow. Yeah. So Rasheed Rice was going to be my guy. I'll pick another one. But I want to I want to read this. I got this. I got this text from a buddy of mine, Andre Ware, my team nine Heisman Trophy winner, and Dre's a good friend of mine. And he did an SMU game back. I think he did SMU Navy on Friday night. And he said, it just says Rasheed Rice weight room numbers. Power cleans 335. He squats 500. He vertical jumped 40 inches after they back squat max. So they did their squat max. And then he went over and he did a 40-inch vert. He's broad jumped 10-9 after they did power cleans. He hit 22 miles an hour on GPS this summer in open uh, training. Single leg pistol squat with a 100-pound plate, which I'm not totally sure what that is. I mean, I can kind of visualize it. And then the strength coach finished with, guys, a freak. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I, would, I, would think, I would think that guy absolutely uh, is, is a freak. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Rasheed Rice was, was going to be uh, my guy. That was the guy I was going to go with. So I'm going to go way off the beaten path with mine since uh, Eric took mine with Rushy Rice. We didn't really – he just shared him instead of mine. Instead of mine. I'm going to give you a guy that – it's interesting because I'm not sure totally what position he plays. Because he's got some tailback abilities. He's got some fullback ability. I could see him used like Kyle Juszczyk with the 49ers. But they give him the ball a lot at North Dakota State, and that's Hunter Lupke. 6'1", 236 pounds. And he's the kind of offensive weapon that you look at and go, where do I really play him? But it's not one of those like, what am I going to do with this guy? It's more, boy, how can I use this guy? I think when he comes to the NFL, I think he could be a guy that lines up with his hand in the dirt as a Y at times. I think you could play him at fullback. You could use him as an H. I think you could get in power sets if you wanted to, if you had a fullback, um, and just run him downhill. He is extremely athletic for a guy that size. And even though not a lot of teams are using fullbacks, I don't really see him as a fullback. I think he is a combo back that used in the right way. And that's why I thought of Kyle Juszczyk because Kyle's not – he's not the hammerhead. Like, we've got a hammerhead in Houston, Troy Harrison. He went from defensive end at Central Michigan, came here, and they put him at fullback and said, hit that guy on the end of the line or hit that linebacker. And he's like, okay. And he does it, and he's really good at it. I don't see Lubke that way. I think he's a little different. But I think if a team was looking for someone like Juszczyk, and Eric, you see Juszczyk all the time, that weapon that he is, I mean, he's not a hammerhead blocker, but he knows who to block. He catches the ball extremely well. And if you ever needed to run him with the football, he could do that as well. I won't hold it against him that he went to Harvard. But having a weapon like that, Eric, how valuable is that to an offense? Extremely valuable. And if you ask Coach Kyle Shanahan, he'll tell you that as well. Not only does Kyle Juszczyk do all those things, but when they line up, a lot of times he'll – call out different things that he's seen from the defense. Guys are blitzing. He'll identify the mic. He does a lot of what the quarterback's supposed to do. Kyle Juszczyk takes some of that on his shoulders. And not only that, he's a guy who actually tweeted out about this kid out of North Dakota State. So he sees him. I think they wear the same number as well, number 44. Yep. Uh, So he's getting on guys' radars, that's for sure. And the fact that he can run it downhill a little bit. I mean, if you want to go in 11 personnel, a couple tights, what I would call tech formation, and just pounded a little bit, and he's coming downhill. Great receiver. Hunter Lupke out of North Dakota State. All right, on the other end, I've got some either-ors, and there's a theme with the either-or. You'll get it. It's pretty easy, but I'll hit my guys with some either-or on the other side. But first, I want to talk to you about jobs. How about LinkedIn Jobs? And LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. You started a business, and it's going well. But you realize, man, I have all this on my shoulders. I need some help. What do I do? Well, it's pretty simple. You go to LinkedIn Jobs. You add your job, what you're looking for. Senior director of PR, uh, managing director of the vending machines, whatever it is. You add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills for your job and the experience that you're looking for, so you can pro- quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires 
versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's get to some either ors, and I'm sure you'll figure out the theme by the second question. But, Eric, we're going to start with you. Let's rock. Either you're a GM, you're looking for a quarterback, maybe not in the first round, maybe in the first round. And you have to pick between either Michael Penix Jr. or Will Levis. Which guy are you taking? Does this have anything to do with me not defending Will Levis, but just talking about his circumstances? I don't think so. (laughs) I'll put it this way. When I came up with that either or. First, I didn't think about that. You might think that with the next one and the one after that, but that was not on my mind with this one. All right. Well, one day we have to talk about that tweet because I think it's kind of relevant. People miss a lot of context when it comes to some of these quarterbacks and sure. and, and their play. But as it pertains to Michael Penix or Will Levis, I, I think I got to go with Penix. Just because I'm a little bit more certain what I'm getting. Will Levis, he might very well go in the top 10, and he might be really good. I think the issue is I know I can get Penix much later. If I get Penix in the third round, fourth round, and the risk isn't as much, but we've seen him make every throw, and I don't think that can be disputed. Michael Penix can make every throw. I think there is a little bit of aiming going on. Like He sees it, he aims, he throws it. Uh, a little bit of Kaepernick going on with some of his uh, mechanics, just the way it looks. And I won't say Kaepernick because I think Kaepernick just had an even stronger arm and was a little bit more uh, straight line uh, speed. But nonetheless, I mean, I, I think he's going to be a legit mid-round type prospect. So I'll go with Penix just because I'm a little bit more sure of exactly what I'm getting. Ryan Tracy, you are the GM. Do you want a more sure thing with Michael Penix Jr. or do you want a little bit of a athletic wild card like Will Levis. I think if I, as I've gone through this, I, th- I think it's determined that for me as a GM and trying to fight for my job and my survival, I want that sure thing. I agree with Eric. I think Penix is the safer bet. Is he the upside bet? No. And somebody in this league is likely to take the upside bet. Top 10, I can't see that happening. Could he be sneak into the first round? Possibly for me. I still don't see Levis right now. It's a two quarterback class for me. After that, it's all a question mark if it's 33 or after. But definitely I would feel safer if I'm in that seat with Penix. All right. Well, you're going to love this next one. You both are the GM. You're now Terry Fontenot. You're the GM of the Atlanta Falcons. Ryan Tracy, we'll start with you. Either Marcus Mariota or Kentucky quarterback Will Levis. Now Why is Desmond saying, Ritter not one of my choices? And Desmond Ritter's not one of your choices. <laughs> now you set the theme. Levis or Marcus Mariota? I, I will take Levis in the upside because I think his floor is probably similar production-wise to what you have in Mariota. I still think Mariota's, even at his age, a little bit more athletic, but I just don't see you raising Pitts and London to the level that they need to be. I think I need more arm talent. I think I'll take the chance on Levis. Eric Crocker, Terry Fontenot. Atlanta Falcons GM, Marcus Mariota or Will Levis? I'm riding with Marcus Mariota on this one. You know, again, this is a guy right now. He has the Atlanta Falcons, a team that was really down in the dumps at 500 and kind of in the mix for a playoff spot. And, you know, with everything that Atlanta Falcons has going on, their defense is not great. They do have some weapons offensively, but the offensive line is definitely still up and down. And he's making do with what they have. Now, the pass catchers, they definitely continue to add there. But I mean, we're talking about two guys, right? You got, you got Pitts and you got London. And there's not much more outside of that, really, on the entire offense, aside from the quarterback doing a lot with his legs. And I watched him what, complete 13 out of 14 passes against the San Francisco 49ers. I know he hasn't been that consistent throughout the year. But anybody who has this Falcons team kind of steady, I'm pretty sure this wasn't the expectations uh, for this team amongst the media. Maybe in-house they knew that they have somebody that can at least keep them in the mix. So I, I'd have to go with him because of those circumstances. Not ideal, but he's making do with what he has. Let me follow that up because if I'm advising Terry Fano, and, and 
uh, Mr. Fontenot, I, I will tell you this point black if you would like to have a conversation. All he's done is put you in purgatory because he's not taking you any farther. That's my point is like, I agree with you. He is steady, but is that what's best for this franchise? I don't know. Cause I'm, I'm rolling the dice. All right. Well, you're now going to be able to roll the dice as Joe Douglas, the GM of the New York jets, Eric Crocker, you will go first, either sticking with Zach Wilson or Drafting Will Levis from Kentucky in the <laughs> third round. Give me Levis. You know, l- l- listen, I'm kind of souring on Zach Wilson a little bit. And in the draft process, I tell a lot of people about this. It's not always about how much talent somebody has. It's about what's up here and who the person is. You are drafting a person. And you better get that part of it right. I can deal with ups and downs. I can I can deal with everything not being ideal or perfect right away if my quarterback has the right mindset and I know that he's going to put in the work, he's going to take everything on his shoulders, and eventually he will improve. Well, Zach Wilson, Sunday, in the media, they asked him, hey, man, uh, you you guys only mustered up three points offensively. Do you think you let down the defense? He said no. And he didn't even have to think about it. Yeah. He He didn't even think about it. No, not at all. Not at all. And I just don't know how you don't take accountability for a performance like that. You complete like nine passes in the game. And I'm not saying it's all on him, but you can't say that the offense did not let the defense down. When the defense gave up three points in the entire game, then obviously the punt return for a touchdown to lose the game. But anybody that's willing to stand up there and with a straight face say that, now, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't have done more. We did everything we could have done. The defense just kind of looked like, no. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of out on Zach Wilson and the person. And because of that, I'll go with Will Levis. It's interesting because I don't know if my arms can be seen, but I'm going to go like this wide, okay? That's how many yards the New York Jets produced in the second half against the Patriots. Now, if I'm a defensive player for the Jets, Eric, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I heard that and I was like, yo, I was mad. I'm not even in the New York organization. If I was a defensive player, I'd be walking in with that side eye like, you didn't let us down? We did our part, bro. We did our part for sure. You came up with two yards. You had to kick a field goal in the second half, and you got two yards. So I'm with you. Ryan, do you agree? Sticking with uh, with, uh, Zach Wilson. I almost called him Ryan Wilson. Sticking with Zach Wilson or Will Levis. (laughs) I I tell you what. So you're telling me I can go get a bookend to put across from the sauce – I can go get another, even I don't care if he's a sixth offensive line because all my guys seem to get hurt. I can bolster my offensive line and then take Will Levis? Yes. Heart heart attack. I'm I'm racing to that podium in the third round for Levis. Take him all day long. Okay. Let's get to Omar Khan in Pittsburgh. Super, super guy. He was up for the Texans GM job, and some people thought he was going to get it before Nick Casario got that job. He is now the GM of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ryan Tracy, Kenny Pickett. Or, you guessed it, Kentucky quarterback Will Levis. This is a really great conversation because they are two diametrically opposed quarterbacks, in my opinion. One with the arm talent and not so much the cognition, and the other the opposite. I am rolling with the guy that I already have in-house, and I think Kenny Pickett will continue to ascend. Is he going to be a rocket? Is he going to be the next Ben Roethlisberger? I don't see that happen. But he's a guy that you can win 10 or 12 games with a year, I think, in the correct offense, and I think he will get to that point. I will stay with Kenny Pickett. Eric Crocker, Kenny Pickett or Will Levis in Pittsburgh? I'm going to stick with Kenny Pickett. You know, one, one thing about Kenny Pickett, I think, you know, when the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted him, again, they got to learn the person. He's been in-house. They're using their facilities, uh, playing at Pittsburgh. They got to watch a lot of him and really just kind of see him grow up. And I think you know a little bit more about what you're getting, whether the ups, the downs. I like the athleticism and mobility of Kenny Pickett. Maybe he doesn't have quite the arm strength, but I don't think that's been the hindrance of him so far throughout his rookie year. So, yeah, I'll go with Kenny Pickett. All right, I think I agree with you both. I would go with Kenny Pickett, too. I think Kenny's going to – I think he's going to get better and better and better, and, and Eric brought up a great point. The practice facility at Pitt was right there. If they don't know what kind of character Kenny Pickett is, then nobody's going to know at that point. So, uh, I would ride with Kenny Pickett on that one for sure. And we – 
want to ride with you, and we thank you for making Lockdown NFL Draft your first listen of every day. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. We will preview this weekend's rivalry games in college football. We'll have a Friday night draft for you. we got plenty for you the rest of the week, so keep it locked right here on Locked On NFL Draft. We'll see you next time. For Eric, for Ryan, I'm John. Let's go.